Welcome, everyone. Today, we are going to interview Dr. Carrie Rothschild about marathon training. Um, Carrie is actually a clinical professor right now in the Doctor of Physical Therapy program at the University of Central Florida. She received her bachelor's degree from the University of Florida, so she's a Gator. I married into a Florida yeah. State family, and she received <laughs> her doctorate in physical therapy from Boston University. Um, she is actually double board certified in sport and orthopedic physical therapy, and she recently got certified in um, pelvic floor physical therapy and has been in clinical practice for roughly 19 years. She also works here at Pursuit, so I don't know how she finds time to be able to <laughs> teach, train for marathons, and treat clinically, but somehow she makes it happen. And um, she specializes in the management of running injuries, conditions with the female athlete, and pain neuroscience. So welcome, Carrie. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm Are you ready to make – yeah, nice. Are you ready to make Orlando a healthier place? Of course. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. So the first off is where do you have time to train for a marathon? That's the first question. <laughs> well, uh, very early in the morning. I am one of those early risers, and sometimes I have to set my alarm at 4, 4 a.m., so I need to get to bed early, which is tough, too. What time do you end up going to bed? Uh, usually, I get in bed around 9, 9.30, lights off by 10, so nice. I try. Okay, so you still, get a, you still get a good, you know, that's three, four, you still get a good six to seven hours of sleep then. Yeah, I try. I know how important sleep is. So, yeah. <laughs> gotta get it. So, how many times have you done and c completed the Boston Marathon? I just completed it for the eighth time uh, eighth back time. in April of this year. Eighth I was going to say seven. So that's that's impressive. That's okay. That's awesome. So, <laughs> so let's go over in depth now, just some basics. If if someone wants to start doing a marathon or 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 they want to train, so let's pick your brain a little bit on this. So, if someone wants sure. to do a marathon. How long out should they ideally pick the race that gives them enough time to train um, in order to prepare for their first marathon? You know, that's going to be a variable answer. Um, it really would depend on the runner's current running base. Um, if they've already been running, say, 10 miles a week, they've already got a little bit of a base started. But if they've got zero miles a week, then we might want to allow a little bit more time. Um, for someone that's got a little bit of base underneath them, I think six months is a good time frame. Um, someone that's maybe running closer to 15, 20 miles a week might only need four or five months to get ready for a marathon. Um, okay. The big thing is going to be looking at um, managing the total weekly distance that someone's running and not to ramp that up too soon or too fast. Yeah. Do you recommend or do you personally follow the 10% rule generally that you never increase your workload greater than 10% week to week over your <laughs> training period? Yes, I do. Although there's not a lot of clinical research or evidence that supports that 10% rule. Um, yeah. I just actually wrote a little bit of a paper that included that information this is past week yeah. um, that there really isn't any evidence, but it's still kind of a good rule of thumb. And I do think a lot of um, marathon or distance runners do do follow that. Because you really okay. don't want to load all the body tissues too too soon because then they'll end up with an injury. Yeah. I mean, one of the most common risk factors for runners is specifically just workload. You know, doing too much too fast, <clears throat> not, not following yeah. that 10% uh, rule is a general right. guideline that leads runners to injuries anyway. So um, maintaining sure. and getting a program that is customized that will play a factor or kind of guide you on preventing yeah. overload and stuff is a great thing to do. So roughly For as sure. a new, as a new beginner, you said pretty much six months. And then as a more advanced runner or someone who's already running as small as yeah. three to four months. Sure. Okay. Yep. Um, I agree. How can someone find a good program to kind of guide them on or like a running program to get them ready for, for a marathon. Is there resources online you like? Is there anything that you put out there? Is there anything specific that you recommend for a new runner? You know, I haven't put out anything for specifically. Um, there are a lot of resources. There's so much with the internet. Um, you know, Runner's World has a lot of different running programs that you can get. They are for purchase. 
Um, there are lots of different running websites that you can get information from. Uh, locally, we have a great uh, running store locally that offers a marathon training program, um, the Track Shack. And I think nice. that um, they are, um, uh, it's a really great group to join because you're going to be running with other people. You'll be kind of accountable. And that's one big thing with training for a marathon is showing up for those long runs. Yeah. Um, so I think that um, there's lots of resources. I think it's just to make sure that you're um, not doing too much too soon is really going to be important. Yeah. <clears throat> Most of the runners in this group and who are watching this know of Track Shack. So you can visit mm -hmm. trackshack.com. I just pulled it up and you can go to their website and download mm -hmm. a marathon training program for you. And Track Shack is a credible source. We get our shoes there right. too. So um, yes. that's a great resource for you. If you're interested in doing a marathon that you can go to trackshack.com and download their marathon program. If you do have questions, you can send us an email, both of us at pursuit therapy at gmail.com. Sure. And we can get you in touch with a good, um, training program to get ready for a marathon. So next question is, Absolutely. so for your last Boston marathon, um, what was your training like for that? How many months out were you training for, and was it any accelerator program? Were you trying to do a PR <laughs> on this last marathon, or what was your training program like for your last Boston marathon? Oh, well, this most recent year wasn't um, as vigorous as some years previously. Um, I did train very, very tough for the 2018 Boston Marathon, and I followed a training program that was offered through the Boston Athletic Association. So it was pretty detailed and had some interesting workouts that included a little bit more hill training because the Boston course is, um, got so, is known for some hills, even though we don't have yeah. a lot of hills here in Florida. <laughs> we don't have so a lot we, of hills in Florida. No. So we, uh, so some of my friends and I would go out to um, Claremont or go out to Apopka and try to get some of those hill runs in. So yeah. um, this year I, I kind of did it more for um, – I wouldn't say for fun, but I didn't have a time goal this year. So. Yeah, just to go out and do it. What was your fastest Boston Marathon? My fa fastest Boston Marathon was um, about a three-hour, 32-minute marathon. I Very think nice. that was back in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Very nice. Very nice. Good. Thank so, you. As you're training for a marathon, what's your diet like? Any specific recommendations that or things <clears throat> that you like to do that help you train sure. throughout your marathon training? Sure. I don't follow any specific diet. Um, overall, I try to eat pretty clean. Um, I do eat a lot of uh, seafood, a lot of salmon, a lot of steelhead trout, uh, chicken, lean, green, lean ground beef. Um, Shalene Flanagan is a famous runner. Um, she's run and won the New York City Marathon. Mm -hmm. And she has produced a cookbook, which is kind of a neat book that's got some marathon runner friendly recipes. So it's called Eat Fast, Run Slow. No, Run Fast, Eat Slow. Let me get that straight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've gotten some recipes out of there. Um, you know, I like to eat um, pretty much anything that helps fuel me. Um, but I still make room for some, some sweets and sweets here and there because I do love my dark chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that as someone's training for a marathon too, you're burning so many calories, so it's not mm -hmm. going to be like a weight loss diet. You're going to have to optimize the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating and consuming mm -hmm. in order to be able to complete the training and stuff like that. So um, we'll have Absolutely. to bring a dietitian on and kind of recommend what type of diet do we need for a marathon tr like race or an as someone's training for marathons, what's the optimal diet for that? Because it's going to be totally different than like a weight loss diet versus paleo. You Definitely. probably have to be able to watch your macronutrients versus carbs, proteins, and fats. Mm -hmm. And the carbs are probably going to be up kind sure. of high. So, um, yeah. And I think especially as you're preparing, you know, to do the long run, which might be once a week, really the day, the night before, or even two days before making sure that you're getting all those carbohydrates in, and yeah. then the hydration is so important too, especially yeah. in Florida. Okay. Yep. Definitely with that. <laughs> if if someone yeah. goes out and runs at 12 o'clock in the daytime right now, you're probably oh, dehydrated no. for like two days almost. Probably. You're just chugging water. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so let's talk about injury management. Um, as someone's sure. training for a marathon, you know, there is a greater risk of injuries, you know, you know, 
everyone goes through an injury or two. I'm sure that you've had had some or two um, as sure you have. train for your marathons. But um, what should someone do if they start to get an injury throughout their training process? Um, do you recommend them to consult with us like a physical therapist, or is it something that some key tips that they need to do if they feel an injury coming on, what are some advice that you have for people who may be feeling an injury coming on or starting to get that overload a little bit mid training? Mm -hmm. What do you recommend them to do in that case? I, I recommend not running through it. I think a lot of runners think, Oh, I'm just going to run through it and it's going to go away. And it's probably not. Um, you know, we have that, that load demand that's placed on the tissues. And once they've kind of reached that threshold and they're starting to be bothered, I think the first thing you do is skip a workout, skip a run, um, treat it like a, you know, acute kind of injury, maybe do some initial icing, maybe some rest, some protection, um, and then give it a couple days before trying to get out there and run. If you're having pain with walking, you should not be running. If you can't do a single leg jump, or hop without discomfort, it's probably not going to go well if you continue to resume, to resume your running plan. So, so that was um, an excellent course. thing that I will highlight really quick that, you know, would you recommend they get pain free before they start running again? So they rest a little bit, whether it's three or five days, they feel good and then they start running mm -hmm. again. Or you're the one point that I really want to highlight is if you're walking in pain, you can't be running in pain. So that means it's, yes. it's time to take either more rest, do some more mobility, Correct. myofascial release stuff to you, or consult Absolutely. a specialist like Carrie yes. or myself. So yes, do you highlight the point where you should be pain-free before you start running again? Or can you, it, is there a level where you can still manage it and keep on running? I think a general guideline is as long as the pain on a zero to 10 scale is no greater than a two out of 10 um, is kind of reasonable um, because we don't want to, there's still some delayed muscle soreness that's fairly normal. Um, but when it's persisting into walking activities or just even, like I said, a single leg kind of a hop or jump activity, um, you know, we want to make sure it's not turning into, if it's a bony stress injury, like a shin splint that's yeah. progressing. Um, or maybe a tendonitis that's now pro pro progressing into a tendinopathy. Um, that's really when I think you you're, want to get into see somebody. Physical therapy, yeah. of course, I'm going to recommend um, to get an assessment and see where those weaknesses are and see where those deficits in mobility and strength are. Yeah, with some of our return to run programs and some of our runner athletes, I like using mm -hmm. that same area. You know, you can push to like a two out of ten pain as high as yes. maybe a three out of 10 pain, but you, do, you should always recover after. Meaning Absolutely. it's okay to have muscle soreness, you know, muscle mm -hmm. soreness from training, that's okay and that's okay to push through. Right. But if you're starting to get joint pain or tendon uh -huh. pain or mm -hmm. uh, like the ankle or the foot is starting to hurt or bone pain, then that's a time. I like to just say, listen to your body. Your body's telling you sure. that something's wrong. So, yes. and if you're on a training schedule, this isn't the time to push through pain and keep on running through it because your recovery process mm -hmm. is going to be twice as long now. And yes. you, you may have to sit out some time because you actually have yes. a full blown injury now because you're not catching it soon enough. So I love that general Absolutely. rule of, you know, two mm -hmm. or three out of 10 pains. Okay. To push through a little bit, as long as you recover mm -hmm. in the next day or two before your next run. That's right. If, Absolutely. I concur. If you are walking in pain, that's already a legit injury. And I would recommend, yes. and I'm sure Carrie would also, that you need to get that solved first before Absolutely. you get back to training hard and stuff. So, right. and right. again, I mean, people can reach us easily online and stuff like that. You can reach us at uh, the website at pursuittherapy.com if you have any questions mm -hmm. about that. But as a general sure. guideline, it's okay to push through two or three out of 10 mm -hmm. pain. If you're walking in pain, you're already in that uh, pain phase or injury phase that yes. we both kind of recommend that you need to get back to being pain free and right. before you get started back on back on running and stuff. So, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some what is uh, some tips that you have prior to race day? So. Before your last Boston Marathon or before you're training for a 
um, like a race. That week, yeah. how soon do you start teetering off of, of your training? Three weeks, two weeks, one week? When do you start ramping down that your training is done, you've maximized the training benefits? Mm -hmm. How soon prior to the race do you start uh, training down and backing off of the intensity a little bit? Sure. Uh, most marathon training programs will uh, utilize either a two or three week taper. So meaning your last long run will be maybe three weeks before your race or maybe two weeks before your race. Um, and so you really want to be cutting back the total amount of volume, um, basically to allow your tissues to kind of recover from all the hard training that's been put in. Um, you'll probably want to just maintain some of your, uh, if you're doing any kind of speed work or any kind of pace work, mm -hmm. to really uh, tailor it that down and just um, aim for the race goal pace. So if your goal pace is an eight minute marathon, uh, mile per uh, mile marathon, my oh, goodness, eight minutes per yeah. mile on the marathon pace, um, you know, to keep your speed work in and around that range, because you're really not going to have any additional gains in your training during that last, you know, week or two mm -hmm. of training. So it really okay. should be a time of repair, recovery, good nutrition, sleep, um, you know, taking care of all those body parts, making sure that they're going to be ready for race day. Is that last long run 26.2 miles or is it stop at like 24 or 23? I typically like do around 22. Um, okay. Variable programs will call for maybe 22, 23, 24. Um, but I think majority of programs will probably be somewhere between that 20 and 23 range. Oh, well, that's interesting because it, it probably is like if you can do 24 miles or 23 miles, mm -hmm. you can definitely do 26. So yeah. it's, are there any programs that take you to, to like 30? So you run at 30, so hmm. doing 26 is easy? I don't think it... so. Um, yeah. I think when you're doing those long runs, generally you are going to be running at a bit slower pace. So when you calculate the total time on your feet, you're probably going to be about the same amount of time on your feet, maybe as your goal race day um, time would be. So yeah. you may be running a nine-minute mile during your training run, but your goal might be an 8.30 mile during your marathon. So the time equivalent should be relatively close. Okay. What are some tips that you recommend the day prior to the race? Are you in full recovery mode? Are you eating, you know, the general, if you look online, everyone's like, eat a pasta meal, whatever that really does. I'm not <laughs> even sure. But what are some tips for you, um, hydration-wise? Are you drinking Gatorade? What do you do? What's your pre-race day routine like? Um, well, for me, I would say just make sure you're not trying anything new. Um, it's hard when you're traveling because when you're eating the day before, you may not be able to have access to foods that you know work well for your body. Um, I would definitely say not to overeat on that first day. I think a lot of recommendations may include using or eating that you know, high carbohydrate meal actually two nights before your marathon, just so you have enough time to, you know, per, you know, uh, digest everything. Um, I think if you've had any trouble with any of your, um, you know, GI distress or, or things that irritate your stomach, you definitely want to avoid. Um, but I think over consuming can be, can be a, a problem because then, you know, you, you have this, you know, panic before the race day that you'll you may need to use the bathroom while you're on the course or something like that. Yeah. Um, is there any benefits to caffeine intake during the race or before the race? Um, that's a good question. I don't think we have conclusive evidence on that in particular. Um, some people will say they need their morning cup of coffee to give them that jolt to get going. Yeah. Um, a lot of the supplements um, that you use on the course, like gels and goos, will be um, infused with caffeine. Um, I'm not familiar with the research to, to that knows if that is actually beneficial or not. Yeah, I was in a study and when I was in DPT school, uh, Gatorade was looking at what is the minimal amount of caffeine that they can put in their drinks in order to maximize performance or improve performance. And this is back then when I didn't even take any, I never drank coffee throughout grad school. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't drink coffee until I was studying for board. So there was four trials <laughs> And they yeah. simulated like a cognitive, a physical and an endurance components in this. Wow. And there was like okay. a placebo, 50 milligrams, mm -hmm. 100 milligrams, 400 milligrams. And it was wow. simulating like a four, four quarter um, sport too. 
And wow. I, I knew that day that I was on 400 milligrams. Now, this isn't marathon yeah. training, but it was more like sports with quarters, like basketball, football, and stuff like that. Sure. But mm -hmm. uh, I knew when I was on the 400 milligrams, because I never took caffeine <laughs> before, I feel like I could jump higher. I could think more. Like you had to wow. run into a room and they held up a science. It was a blue triangle, but I had to jump up and hit the read something because there was words underneath it. So it was processing everything. Uh -huh. I felt yes, like I was yes. unstoppable that time. So um, <laughs> it's, it's always interesting to look at caffeine and sport performance and stuff like that. So I wanted to ask Absolutely. that one caffeine yeah. question, because I'm sure a lot of people drink coffee. A lot of, like uh -huh. a lot of people are, you know, I probably would not recommend this, but I'm sure people are out there drinking monsters before races and stuff like that sure. too. But It'll be interesting yeah. to see the effects of all that stuff coming out. But yeah. um, so the next question is, you know, what are you training for now? I am doing the New York City Marathon in nice. November of this year. Mm -hmm. I've done it twice before, but it's been quite a while since I've been there. So I'm yeah. going to head back with a couple friends and um, no time goal, just kind of going and enjoying the city. And uh, it's a pretty tough course. There's some rolling hills when you get into um, Central Park and mm -hmm. a couple of bridges to follow. It goes through all the uh, five boroughs of New York City. So it's a great race. I'm looking forward to it the first weekend of November. Nice. Do you feel that a lot of marathoners, once they train for one, they have their recovery period, whether it's a week or two, and then like, well, I did all that training. What's the next marathon am I going to sign up for? Do like a lot of marathoners this is, just this is, this pick is on true. the next one? Yeah, well, that's all I have planned for right now. Um, I'm not going to be doing Boston in next uh, next year. I didn't uh, I didn't make the qualifying time because I took it too easy this year. Yeah. So I didn't re-qualify. <laughs> re so I'm going to take the spring off and um, maybe do a triathlon. Or I've nice. recently gotten into uh, another category of running, uh, swimming and running races. So We'll see. We'll see what that brings. But what's yeah, your training? A lot of marathons. What? Yeah. What's your training like right now? What status are you in? Like, what's your speed run, your long run, and what's your pace run right now yeah. in your current well, training? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready. So I'm about, let's see, I've got September, October, uh, two more months of training. Um, so this past month has been um, kind of building the base. I, I had an 18 mile run, long run last weekend. Uh, doing some speed work at the track. I typically run three to four days a week, which is it's possible to train for a marathon and not run every other day. Yeah. Um, I've I've really I've really found that for me, my body needs a day recovery in between. Yeah. Um, and I like to cross train. I like to swim, so it's nice to give my muscles and joints a, a, a break from the road. You know, when you get over forty, you gotta start <laughs> start uh, start yeah. uh, taking care of those body parts. <laughs> Perfect. Well, so. <laughs> What recommendation would you have if someone's watching this and they want to do a marathon for for their first time? What would be some advice that you would give them? Um, I would first advise you to find a location that is going to work for you. Um, I would also recommend looking at the course itself to make sure that if it's really hilly, then, you know, and we can't train with hills here in Florida, that maybe that would be uh, too difficult. So I would familiarize yourself with the course um, and the weather. Uh, we train in the heat of the summer, so the heat isn't always uh, a factor for us Floridians. But personally, I would like to race in 50 degree weather. So I would like to go to a climate that would allow that yeah. kind of uh, temperature. So, um, and I think if you can find a group of people or a training group that will help you be accountable to meet all of your training during the week um, and the months prior to the race will be helpful. Um, again, there's so many, there's a race, probably a marathon every weekend. Um, the yeah. big ones usually require um, a lottery application. So for example, New York City is a lottery application. So, and those, that lottery application was available at I think January or February of this year for the November race. So you want to okay. make sure that you meet those lottery requirements. Um, Chicago, yeah. Marine Corps, those are big marathons that all require a lottery. Okay. And then definitely um, get a training program that works. And we discussed yeah. earlier that you can go mm -hmm. to trackshack.com and download yeah. a legit marathon training program for you. Um, so uh, that's a good point, too. If your marathon is going to have a lot of hills or a big bridge in there, make sure that you do some hill training because 
I did the Cooper That's River right. Bridge run in Charleston once, and there's that huge bridge in the middle, mm -hmm. and my pace yeah. slowed down so much because <laughs> I wasn't used to running on a hill. Then I'm like, my pace is slowing down. I see this little kid running by me, just scooting away. I'm like, man, I'm slowing down big time. So <laughs> that is a good point. If you are, if your marathon does have hills or there is elevation, mm -hmm. it, it is going to help to get some hill work in there. So Absolutely. if anyone has questions um, about marathon training, if they're dealing with an injury mm -hmm. right now, how can someone find you or contact you? Well, you can find me at, at Pursuit Physical Therapy. Um, you can email me there or you can uh, reach out on this Facebook Live video and I can um, re reply back and get in touch with you. Yeah, perfect. We also host a Orlando Runners Therapy Facebook group that you can join we have live interaction that way, or you can visit mm -hmm. pursuittherapy.com. You can send us an email and I'll make sure that Carrie gets that for you. So yeah. um, you're not done yet. Are you ready for the Fab Five questions? Okay, I'm ready. I was wondering okay. what those were going to be. Here we go. Okay, right. one is, what book are you reading right now? I'm reading The Yes Brain. <laughs> I have three kids. So yeah. I'm uh, working on my, my parenting <laughs> skills and uh, being able to meet their needs and uh, help go. them grow. <laughs> nice. Is that going to structure you so every time you say something, your kids just say yes? It is. That is a miscon. Uh, that's a misconceived title because it's it's oh. really about understanding the whole child and 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 just their brain. And and I really like it. It's a really it's been mm -hmm. really informative so far. Because I wonder if my wife's reading that book. Every time she asks me something, she's trying to subconsciously <laughs> make me say yes. So. <laughs> okay. Nice. Number two. What is your favorite restaurant in or around Orlando? Oh my goodness. Um, I am going to say the glass knife. The glass <laughs> I'm a knife. dessert fan. I really like, they've got some great <laughs> breakfast there too. <laughs> Good. Well, if you're running and training for marathons, you can probably get away with eating desserts and be perfectly fine. So that's, that's, good. that's, right. so, that's what I think. That's what I yep. think. <laughs> Number three is who is an under the radar, small business or CEO um, or a business owner in Orlando that you really love what they're doing, but the end of that question can you repeat that last part of the question small business owner. oh yeah what is a what is a like a small business around orlando or a ceo or uh, a small business around orlando that you love what they're doing that no one really knows about yet well i'm gonna say ron miller at pursuit physical <laughs> therapy <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm going to have to go interview myself because that's what the last go. person we had on the podcast was. <laughs> they said the same thing. So I'm going to have to inter interview myself two times now. There you go. Well, um, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of the Track Shack. It's a small business, but yeah. most people know about the Track Shack. But um, for our running community, they do so much great work through their foundation and yeah. helping facilitate youth sports. And I, I really think that's great. Are you in a running group at all? Right I am part of Marathon Fest, yes. And so, so I really, Marathon again, Fest highly advise one, yeah. their Marathon Fest training programs are great. Um, Susan Paul is uh, the kind of the head leader of that group, and there's lots of different subgroups based on your ability level and the race you're training for. Perfect. So, and yeah. that's called Marathon Fest? Yes, and that's also at the trackshack.com website. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fourth one, what did you eat for breakfast this morning? This morning, I had a chocolate berry banana smoothie. Nice. <laughs> that there you I go. Made in my that ninja. Works good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. Last one. What is one problem in healthcare that you want to see solved? That is a loaded question. Um, you have to pick really one like problem. It. There's lots of problems. One we problem know that. in healthcare is. Um, I would say lack of prevention and lifestyle management. Yep. That's huge. Yeah. So instead That's of huge. retroact, instead of looking at the problem, let's help solve yeah. the problem before it even becomes a problem. So that's one of the Agreed. foundation principles of what we do is solving the root cause yes. of someone's yes. problem, not just covering up the problem. And uh, that's right. I, I heard this analogy recently from a functional medicine physician is when mm -hmm. you have a plant and you can see the plant that something's wrong with with the plant like the plant's dying you just don't yep. spray spray paint it green to make it look nice again you got to solve the problem of why like is this plant dying so i heard that analogy recently and i love that is let's solve the root cause or identify that. the risk factors 
of what's causing this plant to die so it doesn't mm -hmm. die, not just right. paint it over uh, green. So thank you, Carrie, for, for uh, joining us. Um, you know, Carrie, you. Carrie is currently a professor at the University of Central Florida in the Doctor of Physical Therapy program. She's double board certified in orthopedics and sport. She specializes in running injuries, marathon training and stuff. And if you need to reach Carrie at all, if you have questions, you can reach mm -hmm. her at PursuitTherapy.com and we will make sure that your question gets to her. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, thank you all for right, making Orlando you. a healthier place. And thank you for all you do. All right, yeah, bye. Thanks. We'll see you.